Let's build a leaky weir. Good morning, Corey from Rockpile. How are you going? Just want to welcome everyone back to a, uh, another little video instalment of what we're doing on our off-grid property in Western Australia. So, as you'll recall, a few videos ago, we did a what we call a little beaver dam. A closer look at the creek. See, it's cut a quite a deep channel, eroded. Just got all these branches. Uh, we started small at the bottom, worked our way up. Uh, we've got this, put a lot of big ones on top here. Hopefully the silt and stuff will kind of turn this into a mound. We may even be able to walk over it one day. That'll be pretty cool. So that's where I am. I'm just looking around because there's just so much. I haven't been down here for like a few days and there's just water everywhere um, so you recall that we did um, a beaver dam we'll call it a beaver dam basically a creek behind me here we blocked it off with branches and debris to create like a leaky weir to try and raise the water table the water height of the upstream side um, we've been checking on it the last few weeks it's been going pretty good and I did notice the other day that uh, we had some tadpoles in there. So we've basically created like a little mini ecosystem just by a couple of hours work, throwing some logs and branches in there. The creek is still able to flow. It just gives us a little bit higher watermark on the upstream side, which is not flowing. It's like quite still because the water flows kind of underneath, I suppose. So we'll just go and check that out and we'll see what we can see. And I'll just pan around here. You can see all the water. It's just seeping out of the ground. So, well actually, that's not true. It, we know where this water is coming from. This water is coming from Kangaroo Creek, which is in behind the bush here, which is where I'm heading this morning. So I've got a ute load of stuff and we're going to go in there and have a look. But first of all, we'll just head over to the little beaver dam. Wow, it is sloppy. I can't see any taddies in there like I did the other day. Maybe they've been eaten by something. Now the deepest part is probably over here. Uh, this is a ute load of oh, sand and weeds and that sort of matter in there. But I can see little crawlies, little bugs, just all sorts of stuff in there. So we've never really had this water issue down here before, like on the surface. It's always been dry. So I'm kind of wondering if that... Because we've raised this water up by probably realistically only about 400 millimetres, maybe just over a foot, whatever that is, 16, 17 inches or something. And the water will soak back in. So maybe that's part of the what we've created is like a bit more of a wetland type area. Hmm. Either way, it's got to be good holding water on your block. So, I'm going to turn you guys off now, and I'm going to go over to Kangaroo Creek, and we'll check that out. I'm back at, well, I'm in, in Kangaroo Creek. So, this is part of our block that, if the sun's a bit bright, I'll just wait them on, hope that's okay, folks. This sun, ah, uh, the sun, the sun's over there, block's here. Uh, this part of our block here is a place that we don't really come to that much because, I don't know, there's not that much going on over here. 
Uh, there is a little section we've nicknamed Dragon Valley up there. Actually, I've just spotted three kangaroos on the rock up there. Uh, there's a section of rocks up there that we've nicknamed Dragon Valley because we actually have a, a pretty good population of little bearded dragon lizards. And in summer, they're everywhere. They run around everywhere. They're so quick. Um, Amanda might be able to whack a quick little picture. I'm dobbing her in now. So this is the creek, and I'll just walk down this way. As you can see, we have a creek line, kind of waves, weaves through here. And basically where those trees start is next door's property. So it's a great big washout, erosion, gully. You know, there's like all this catchment of all this land here, which is probably oh, estimated if you took sort of, there's a valley that sort of runs down here. And there's a ridge up there and another ridge over here. So if you allow for basically this area here, we'll call that the catchment for this zone. And it's probably a good five, between five and eight acres, I reckon, of water. And then obviously the water that runs on the other side of that ridge will go down into the creek on the neighbor's side and then come through us. And the water that flows on the other side of that ridge goes towards our house, is over that way. What's the plan? Well, let's start looking at it simply. We've got a creek system here that is flowing water. So as you can see down there, I'll just show them the camera down there. I just pulled those bits of that bit of grass out. That, that water down there is probably six inches deep, two foot wide. So 600 mil wide by probably 150 mil deep. And it's flowing, it's running that way. We haven't had rain for quite a few days and it's still flowing. So that to me says that there's a lot of water coming from upstream out of the hills that's flowing through us here. We don't really want to stop it as in stop. We want to slow the flow. So we can slow the flow by making little leaky weirs, beaver dams, even just something as simple as chucking half a dozen sandbags in there would slow the flow. The water would build up a little bit, a little bit higher, would seep further into the into the side sides of the creek here so me being me i don't really like hard work that much especially when it's like physical on the shovel i'd rather swing some hydraulic joysticks and dig a hole but as you can see up there so the creek slash gully is quite wide it's probably six meters wide up there now if we were to try and uh, build a little leaky weir across there, it would have to go sort of down and back up. That's quite a lot of effort. Whereas you come down here and things are looking a lot closer together. It's only probably two and a bit meters wide here. So how do you pick that point to as to where where do you put your leaky weir, minimal input, as in me, building the leaky weir, to maximum output. So the output, in this case, will be how much water it's gonna hold, and how high it's gonna hold the water. I reckon if we were looking somewhere across here, it's quite narrow, so, but as you can see, if we raise this here, by probably about 1.2 meters from the bottom up. And then that'll flood all the way back there and hopefully flood a good part of this wide bit over there. Well, my first step is I'm gonna whip a snipper, weed whack, string trimmer, all those words, 
gonna whipper snip uh, a flat area and whipper snip out the foliage in the middle just so I've got something to work with. Um, I do have my leg gaiters on just we just got to be careful of snakes here you just never know by the time i when i crank up the whippersnapper and the chainsaw they'll disappear if there's anything around anyway if not they'll chase me out of the creek um then we're going to basically cut i don't know if you can see just with the sun glare i'll just put my hand there over in the distance over there there's a couple of fallen dead trees we're going to cut some logs up from over there then i've got some canola straw stubble in the back of the ute which we'll use as the matter like the grassy type matter to help block little holes but still let water flow through and then we're going to try something different we're going to put a bit of geofabric in there i know the geofabric's not natural yes i realize that but i'm just keen to see how it goes because it will let water flow through but it helps stop sediment flowing through they use it in like subsoil drains when you wrap a pipe in gravel then you wrap it in geofab and it helps stop the sediment going into the pipe and just lets the water in so we're going to try that in just on this one we will um, now is this an experiment or is this as peter andrews would say it's not an experiment it's a demonstration <laughs> been watching that guy's videos my god they are i just don't know why people don't listen to him but anyway so first things first let's warm up the whippersnipper uh, so i don't have my usual blade on i've just gone back to the the three mil or four mil nylon cord here um the blade's good for thicker stuff, but in the grass, honestly, this this quick change head with this thin cord works heaps better. It does. So choke on. Okay, so that's the whippersnipper and done. I'll take you over and show you a little cleared spot. Glad I put this on because that come in handy. Oh, I've got the coordination of a drunk bear. Okay, so just cleared the little path, only about two meters wide, just across the creek here, just so I'm not work working in the long grass. Next step is to, I'm going to dump all that canola straw right here and then I'm going to go start cutting some timbers. off this timber here for the final timber that's going to go in I think if we can get that in position the way I'm picturing it now is that's kind of upside down but I might cut it in such a way that that actually makes the the overflow so I'm just going to start by trimming up all these dead branches chuck them in the ute and then trim this one up to a certain what I think is going to work and we'll chuck that in the ute and get that over there and we'll go from there.
Hey, so, saw me just cut some wood, and I did talk about that log over there. So my thought was that it's going to be the final log across the top here. It's quite a big log. It's got a bit of a bend in it. I think it might make a good, like, final, like, spillway type log. So that's what I'm thinking about that. And now you can just see down here, this is just a little example I'll show you. So you can see I've made a little mound, right? And look at the water rising up on this side already. Look at it. As compared to this side, where it's just the creek running through. How simple is that? So I think this will fill up actually quite well. Let's get into it. First job is start putting some logs in. Might get uh, Mrs. RP, if she's up for it, to throw us some logs. Start with some smaller ones. I do have one in there that I cut as like, I'll call it my key log which I'm kind of going to dig in a little bit in the bottom here and then we'll just, oh, what was that? Shit. It's all right, just a bit of grass going up me pants. Um, and then we'll just work up from that. I mean, look at it. Look at that. It's already that, full. It's already filled up. Now, I suppose the concern is, this is probably going to take us quite a few hours to do. So we've got more wood to cut. Um, but I reckon it's going to start filling up as we're doing it. So I might end up with wet legs. <laughs> Let's build a leaky weir. All right, um, we've got a log up there that's quite thick, maybe 800. Ready? Okay, so I've just started building it up, um, and yes, we're getting a lot of water coming in. <laughs> so I've just got a couple of big logs either side with some small twiggy type logs in the middle, and now I'm going to grab some more straw and probably just a few handfuls of green matter and just kind of tuck it all in. If you fill it with sand, water will carry sand away through the smallest little gap, but if you fill it with foliage, whether it's um, tree branches, hay, green matter, anything you like, it helps block those little holes and it all overlaps and makes like a big web of water holding stuff. <laughs> so far, the layering of it, always putting in, stuffing in organic material in between all those bits of logs. You can see that it is still flowing, and it is still backing up on the back side, which is what we want. Leaky weir, not a dam. Okay, so we're just going to give this a go. This one, this is a, a geotextile fabric designed for 
landscaping, waterways, keeping weeds out of gardens, keeping silt out of subsoil drains, that sort of stuff. So my thought was we can put it upstream in here and it will help catch silt as it flows down and make a bit of a uh, uh, imper impermeable, is that the word? Layer on here to catch the silty green mattery stuff but still let the water flow through at, a, at like a controlled rate, I suppose you'd call it. I don't know if it's a good idea or a bad idea, just want to give it a go. So I'm going to try and just blend it around here and I might get some dirt and try and put on it to help cover it up and we'll just see what happens. We try and get that big one on and set the height and then pack in all around it. How high are you thinking? Oh look, I don't actually know, but as high as we can from side to side. That log's got this side's probably lower. Lower than that side. We've got a nice the log's got a nice bow in it if we can kind of roll it around, maybe dig that side in a little bit. Yeah. We'll try and get that big one over here. Okay. It's here. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little bit over ambitious with like thinking of things that are like maybe a little bit big and heavy, but that's just part of the challenge, you know? You can't, no such word as can't be done. All right, so I'm thinking because uh, this side of the creek is lower than the other side, I might put the fat end of the trunk on this side and the skinnier end on the other side. So if I can just roll this over, drag it down and get the bum of it there, it's nearly done. Well, it's close, I only want another metre. Now I'm going to try and stand it up. Yep. So I'm just going to try and get this top end to land on the upstream side of the timber. Just some quick uh, physics and geometry. That was actually nothing like I wanted. <laughs> okay. okay. <sighs> it's there now. Is it sort of in the position you want? I think so. Look at all the water down there. Yeah, I know. Okay. Folks, that saw? The little cheese cutter, baby. 
Chuck it. Oh! I thought you meant to catch it. <laughs> well, that's how deep the water is. It just swallowed a chainsaw. How many times has the water gone into your boot now? Uh, three, I think. My shoe has been flooded. How deep do you reckon it is? Uh, deep enough to go over the top of my boot. So that deep, my boot's pretty high. doing it long enough to get some rocks on the edge little bit under there and all that's just going to get covered in sand and rocks and straw and green matter and that'll just be today and then I'll cut the fabric back on that log so you don't see it hide it in behind the rocks and look at it how long's that been An hour and a half okay so the plan just catching my breath. Um, we're going to go put a few scoops of dirt in the ute and then we're going to get some rocks and put on it and we're going to rock this edge here and the same over the other side and probably a layer of rocks. I've made like a little shelf out of the logs under that fabric and we'll put, you can see I've got one rock already there just in the distance. We'll do like a line of little rocks and stuff across here and uh, cut that fabric back and so you can't see it, tuck it in and hide it. And then put a, the ute load of dirt around it, kind of like a little, what's the word for that? Concave thing, like a little area like that. And the dirt isn't really to help immediately stop the water. It's more so when the water rises uh, the water will grab the silt from the dirt and just kind of filter it through the straw and all the little nooks and crannies and you'll just be left with the green matter so when I get the dirt just near the shed the new shed um, I'll get a lot of green life a lot of green weeds and stuff in with it as well that's it I'm sweating bullets alright apart from that it's looking alright I reckon. I think it's going to be pretty good. We'll set the time lapse up uh, when we're done and leave it for a few days. I think we're getting rain tomorrow and today's Sunday, so tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, some rain, and we'll just see what happens here. And like anything, it's not going to be perfect the first time. It may never be perfect, but done is better than perfect. Cheers, folks. We'll catch up with you when we have some dirt. Hey, how's it going? So, that was a little bit sketchy getting in. It was quite a boggy patch back out there and I thought I was going down, but just put the right foot into it and she just crawled out of there. Hasn't really changed much. It's still just filling up and doing basically what we want it to do. So I'm just gonna start with some rocks. I'll just start on this side with some rocks and then some dirt and then I'll have to go get more rocks to finish off the other side. 
but I might just try and find some that are around here. So we'll just start by getting these rocks out, chucking them all down here. Okay, so that'll do for that side. Now I'm just gonna, uh, I'll just back up a little bit more, a bit of a different angle, and I'll start uh, start getting some dirt in there. Sick of shoveling, just gonna have a break for a minute. Done half the thing. I don't just want to tip it in there because then I'll just have to get in the water and shovel it out. So as you can see, doesn't look very big on camera, but uh, it's probably three meters wide at the top. Okay, hopefully this is the last load for the day because I'm running out of puff. So, got some rocks. Just going to build this up here and then hopefully get a few across the top there. I'm done. It's uh, so I lined it with rocks for it uh, up against the log. Just sprinkled some dirt over there, and hopefully, with the rain, next few days, this will hopefully fill up, and wherever the water decides to go through, it'll uh, clear all the sand off the rocks, and the rain will wash the rocks, and should look pretty neat, hopefully. So that's building up there, that water level is currently at least 200 mil higher than the other side. So you can see it building up. Yeah, it's all murky and stuff, but that's just because of what we've been doing with the dirt and the straw and stirring it all up. That'll all, uh, once the, the water starts to flow, uh, all that debris will end up settling down and flowing to the high water line and creating just a little uh, high water mark of mulchy stuff and help seal it up. So I'm going to go back up to the house, grab the boss. Hey, so as you can tell by the uh, boots are off and the thongs are on, day is over. So we did what we wanted to do. We built our leaky weir. I guess that's its official terminology, a leaky weir. Let's water through, slow the flow. Um, but I just want to say thank you for joining us for this little adventure. And that's it. Please subscribe, like and share. And this is Kangaroo Creek Leaky Weir. Thanks guys. See ya.